Hello Internet users, and welcome back to another video where I take unnecessary measures to prove a point. So for a while now, I've been getting a ton of ideas for game-ending situations sent in to me, and out of them all, there was one in particular that really stood out to me, and got me thinking. I had a few different variations of it told to me, but the basic idea is this. What would happen if you trapped yourself at the Pokémon League with just a single electrode that only knows self-destruct? Think about that one for a second. How would you be able to battle your way out of that, if your only available option is guaranteed to knock you out in the process? That's the question we're going to be answering today. So first let's choose the game we'll be doing this in. We already know that we can escape this in Gen 1, due to the 1 in 256 glitch, as we already covered that last time with Magikarp. And in Gen 2, there is an old man with an Abra right outside of the Elite Four. Speaking with him will let you teleport all the way back to your house, so we can't really set something up there either. So in that case, we're going to try and create this trap in Generation 3. Here's what I did to set up the save file. First, I played through most of the game up to when you first have access to the Pokemon League. I made sure that over the course of my playthrough, I only taught HM moves to two Pokemon only. For this to work, I also need to have a Pokemon that knows Teleport. I went ahead and caught an Abra from the cave on Duford. And obviously, I also have to make another stop to catch a Voltorb. Voltorb learns Self-Destruct at level 27, and evolves at level 30. So after a quick little grind, and a visit to the Move Deleter, we're ready to go. At this point, I have zero Pokémon in the PC storage, and five in my party. My Blaziken, who I use to fight all of the battles in the game with, my two HM slaves, the teleporting Abra, and the Pokémon that I'll be trapped with, Electrode. Now that we've got all the tools we need, here's the first step. Use the Pokémon Center at the League. The move Teleport sends you back to the last Pokémon Center you used, so we need to do this in order to mark Evergrande City as our teleport location. Next, release your starter Pokémon, or whatever you used in the playthrough. In my case, it was just Blaziken, but it doesn't really matter. The goal here is to be left with the HM Slaves, the Teleporter, and the Self-Destructor. Next, we need to get rid of the HM Slaves, but they can't be released the same way Blaziken was. If you'll recall from some of my other videos, I've mentioned how it is impossible in this generation to release a Pokémon if it is the last user of an HM move such as Surf or Strength. Attempting to do so will cause the Pokémon to come back, with a message saying that it was worried about you. This feature exists to prevent players from accidentally doing the very thing I'm trying to do right now. However, it can easily be worked around. Put the HM users in the daycare. The reason that I limited my HM moves to only two Pokémon was so that I could just put them both here. Next, use Teleport. This will warp you back to the Pokémon League. And immediately after that, release the Teleporter. Teleport may be usable as a field move, but it doesn't have any restrictions for releasing your last Pokémon that knows it. It's also worth noting that you could also just let Electrode faint, which would also take you back to Evergrande, removing the need for a Teleporter altogether. Doesn't make too much of a difference though, you can go with whatever way you want. Next, get rid of your money and items. This is so that we will no longer have access to Pokéballs, and won't be able to catch anything else to use. And for the final step, save your game. And that's it, viewers. The trap has been complete, and now we're stuck. Let's take a look at our situation. We don't have access to our HM users anymore. This means that we cannot go back through Victory Road. In order to do so, Surf, Strength, Rock Smash, and Waterfall are necessary to have, all of which cannot be taught to Electrode. As you can see from this footage here, we cannot go very far into the cave now before we need Rock Smash and Strength. The only other way to leave the area is to defeat the Elite Four, something that obviously cannot be done when your only move is self-destruct. Looking at all of the suggestions for this, it seems like you guys really had everything covered. Because all of the TMs were discarded, it's impossible to teach Electrode another offensive move. As well, because it faints upon self-destructing, it will never be able to gain EXP, meaning that it can't learn new moves by leveling up. As well, it'll never run out of PP for self-destruct, as after it faints, you'll be brought back to the Pokémon Center and it will all be restored. This means that there is no way for Electrode to use Struggle either. By now, I'm sure that a few of you are thinking that you can just trade the Electrode for something else. But that's not possible either. For some bizarre reason, in Ruby and Sapphire, there is no escalator at the Pokémon League, meaning that there is no way to access the Trade Center. Interestingly enough, this was addressed in Emerald version, and one was added to the map. 
However, it doesn't even make a difference, as you need to have at least two Pokemon to be able to trade. And because we don't have Pokeballs, or any way to earn money to buy them, we can't catch something to meet that requirement. So any hope of just sending another Pokemon that knows Fly from another game is out of the question. The save file now seems to be ruined, with the player now stuck in an endless hell where all they can do is self-destruct and wake back up at the Pokemon Center. The end of the game is just within reach, but the player can now no longer go forward or backward. All we can do now is start over from the beginning. Or, we could take a look and see if there's something stupid you could do to escape it. So I really had a lot to consider for this one. You all made sure to give me as little to work with as possible, but I still knew that somewhere there had to be something that you all missed. Something that I could take advantage of. And luckily, there was. In order for this escape to be possible though, two conditions need to be met beforehand. The biggest problem to overcome here is the fact that Electrode only knows self-destruct. For there to be any chance of escape, I need to have access to something that allows me to give it another move. And that something is Flash. Like I said earlier, we had to get rid of all of our items. However, key items, including HMs, cannot be discarded. Once they are obtained, they are permanently stuck in your bag, and are always available to use. That being said, most of the key items here won't do us any good except for Flash. Out of all the HM moves in the game, Flash is the only one that Electrode can learn. Nobody seemed to think to restrict this as a part of the setup, likely due to the fact that it's not a damage-dealing move, and that it's technically an optional item found early in the game. And let's face it, it really is a pretty forgettable HM move. So now Electrode has two moves, but the question now is, what does this change? In battle, all Flash does is lower the opponent's accuracy. Even if it's used, all you're really doing is stalling, and Electrode is eventually still going to be forced to use self-destruct. It doesn't seem like teaching it the move accomplishes anything at all. However, this is where the other condition comes into play. Whether or not you can escape is also dependent on which version of the game you are playing. I'm sure by now some of you have been wondering why I haven't been playing on Emerald version, as it is considered to be the quote-unquote definitive edition of Gen 3. This is because in Emerald, you cannot find Meditite or Medicham in the wild. However, in Ruby and Sapphire, they both can be found in Victory Road. Within this trap, we only have access to two floors, one of which we cannot go very far into, due to needing HM moves. It is within these few tiles that we have a 10% chance of encountering a Medicham, and a 5% chance of encountering Meditite. These two Pokémon are very important, due to the fact that they know the move, High Jump Kick. High Jump Kick is a move that has seen some changes throughout the different generations. Upon missing the kick, the user will crash and hurt itself. Here in Gen 3, the recoil is equal to half of the damage the move would have dealt if it landed. In Gen 2, it was one eighth of the damage. And in Gen 1, it was bugged and only dealt a single hit point to the user. Show of hands, is anyone honestly surprised to hear that? Apparently it was fixed for Pokemon Stadium though. But anyways, what's important here is how the move works for us in our current situation. Upon encountering either of these two Pokemon, we can both waste turns and lower their accuracy with Flash. From there, it's just a game of chance, hoping that they KO themselves from repeatedly missing High Jump Kick. This is incredibly tedious to do, but the point is, doing so proves that it's still possible to gain EXP in a battle. Now I know what you're thinking though, but wouldn't it be easier to find a Pokemon like Graveler who knows Explosion? And you would be correct, except that the only way to encounter Geodude and Graveler in this game's Victory Road is by breaking boulders with Rock Smash, and as we've previously gone over, that's not a move we have access to. Out of all the other Pokémon in Victory Road, there aren't any others that know self-destruct or explosion either. High Jump Kick is the only way to make an enemy Pokémon here faint. There is nothing else to work with. After a whole lot of time continuing to do this, eventually Electrode will reach level 34, where it learns Rollout. To get to this point, I had to take down 7 Medicham and 9 Meditite. From there, things get a bit easier. Now that we have a way of dealing damage, we can slowly level up Electrode until it gets more moves. With Rollout, you can slowly but surely knock out some of the weaker Pokémon like Zubat and Wizmer. At level 48, Electrode will learn Swift. This is the last offensive move that it can learn by leveling up not including Explosion, which we obviously don't want. The next goal is to try to defeat the first member of the Elite Four, Sydney. Even if Electrode were to reach level 100, it doesn't seem feasible that it could defeat the champion with its lacking move pool. 
However, if we can just beat Sydney, we will earn enough money to be able to afford Pokeballs. This does take quite a bit of grinding to accomplish though, especially since his first Pokemon has Intimidate as its ability. After likely being defeated by Phoebe right away, you should have enough to buy two Ultra Balls. Now that we've finally gotten our hands on these, you should easily be able to capture something and use it to be able to trade with another game. But in the event that that isn't possible, you'll have to be more selective with what you go and catch. If you were to get a layer on and then evolve it into Aggron, you would be able to teach it Surf, Strength, and Rock Smash. However, you would still need a Waterfall user to get out of Victory Road. Surfing on the water here gives a 100% chance of encountering Golbat, and no Water-type Pokémon. In this area, the only way to capture something that can be taught Waterfall is to fish. However, all of the fishing rods are optional items. In the event that you didn't pick up any of the rods, the last option is to catch a Golbat. For some reason, Golbat is unable to learn Fly until it evolves into Crobat, so you're going to have to spend some time increasing its friendship before that will happen. Once you have Fly, you can come and go as you please. You're now free to resume your adventure and can go properly prepare for the game's final battles. And there you have it, the Electrode Trap has been escaped. And in addition to that, for the first time in Pokemon history, we found a situation where Flash is actually necessary to make progress. That being said, now that we know the flaws of this trap, we can change it a little in order to make it truly impossible. Since Flash is optional, all you have to do is not pick it up during the early portions of the game. And even though that's all we need to do, let's go ahead and make it even more cruel. Another thing you could do would be to have Electrode at level 100 when setting things up. That way it would no longer be able to level up, and therefore could not learn any new moves. Again, nobody thought to add this restriction because it already appeared impossible for Electro to be able to gain EXP in the first place. Another thing that people surprisingly forgot was the Colosseum Bonus Disc. With this, you can send a Jirachi to Ruby or Sapphire. Doing so would give you the second Pokémon you need to be able to trade with other games. However, only one Jirachi can be sent per save file, so all you'd have to do is obtain and release the thing beforehand, ensuring that you can't receive one once you're trapped. As well, you could just perform all of the steps on Emerald version, which apparently can't receive this Jirachi at all. In addition to that, this would prevent Medichamp and Meditite from being found in the wild. And that's not all. Did you know that it's actually possible to reach the Pokemon League without all of the badges? You can completely skip Winona, as the badge you earn only allows you to use Fly. And as convenient as Fly is in just about every Pokemon game, it's not necessary to use it to make progress. So if you set the trap up now, you'll no longer be able to enter into the Elite Four battles. Assuming that the single available trainer in Victory Road has been defeated, it's now impossible to enter into to a battle where you can gain money, even if you could attack. Now it doesn't even matter what Pokemon you have. It could be Electrode, or it could be a level 100 Groudon with nothing but offensive moves. There's nothing you can do but battle the wild Pokemon in Victory Road now, and there isn't anything to gain by doing so. With all of the options cut off, we're now left with the perfect recipe for a disaster and have completely ruined a perfectly good game of Pokemon. Through similar methods, you could also set this up in Fire Red and Leaf Green, since Flash is an optional item in those games too, and there is no 1 in 256 glitch. And I'm sure that some of you are wondering about the 3DS remakes. Well, it should come as no surprise that you're not able to replicate what we've done here in those games. This is because that starting with Gen 5, all TMs were no longer single-use items, and thus, you could not sell or get rid of them. And in order to reach this point in the game, you'd have to defeat Watson, who in the remakes gives you the TM for Volt Switch, meaning that you'd always have the option to give an Electrode a damage-dealing move. Another reason the trap wouldn't work is because of the Eon Flame. This item essentially functions as a way to use Fly without the need of an HM user. Therefore, by the time you would make it to the Pokemon League, you'd always have an escape option, no matter what you try. In addition to that, the initial idea for this video was centered around this trap happening at the Pokemon League. However, this is most certainly not the only location that you can trap yourself in. By following the same steps as before, with a few changes, you can strand yourself in places like Dewford, Pacifolog, or even Sutopolis. Even if you get the fishing rods, it won't make a difference. Provided that you've cleared out every possible way to earn money at your selected location, you won't be able to buy any Pokeballs, which means you won't be able to obtain a second Pokemon needed to trade with. And that about does it for this video. If you ever feel like ruining your friend's save file, feel free to give this a try, because I highly doubt they'll ever do this to themselves. 
I've always found these game ending situations to be a really interesting topic. There's a lot to learn about game design by examining how different mechanics and features can be used in unintended ways. In the same way people find glitches appealing, it's fun to find mistakes in what is supposed to be a professional and commercially sold work. And in the case of a long-running series like Pokemon, it's also fun to see how the developers address these problems in future games. When I did my video about getting stuck in Lorelei's room, many were quick to say that you'd likely never end up in that situation unless you did so intentionally. The same could be said about what we've talked about throughout most of this video too. But despite that, Game Freak's still saw it worth correcting in Yellow version. Since I made that video, I've learned that in Yellow, the game is programmed to specifically check if the enemy Pokemon is Lorelei's Dugong. If so, the game will change how the AI selects its moves, just to prevent her from accidentally triggering the infinite battle. Out of every trainer in the entire game, this only applies to Lorelei, all for the off chance that some poor kid might have otherwise ruined their save file. And that to me is pretty amazing, especially when you consider all of the other stuff they didn't fix. But anyways, that's all I have to say. My name is Picasbury, and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I spent a long time editing it and I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a couple of other things I've done on the screen right now. If you want to see some more of my stuff, I guess you can click on it. I don't have a gun to your head though, so do what you want. Thanks again and see y'all next time.